Alright guys, so I've been having an issue with my Dodge Ram for the last couple weeks and it started off where I'd be driving down the street and the truck would just cut off, literally would just stop running. My gauges would pause for a minute and then they just drop. I'd still have power on my dash and everything, but I just wouldn't have power to the vehicle. Then what would happen is i coast over to the side of the road, turn the key off, turn it back on and the truck would fire up fine. I might drive for you know, a mile or less and would do the same. So we're gonna try to diagnose the problem and see if we can fix it. It seems like as long as I'm going, you know, maybe 30 or below, I don't have the issue. But as soon as I stop on it, see, it just stalled. I got nothing, my gauges drop, engine light goes on. Coasting over to the side of the road here. I can put it in park, turn the key off. And it fires back up. Put it in drive. And I'm driving again. So that's what's happening. All right, so there's multiple things that can cause your vehicle to do this. You're gonna see next the things that I tried. They didn't work, and then at the end of the video, you'll see what actually worked for me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the simplest and cheapest thing before I buy any of those sensors. I did this in the past with other vehicles. I'm going to check the idle air control valve, and I'll show you where that's located. If you go ahead, pop off this top here. It's underneath it. It's got one screw holding it in. You can pull it out, clean it, pop it back in, and then we're gonna check to see if that's what fixes the problem I'm having. On this 4.703 Dodge Ram, it's real easy. All you do is loosen up this band that goes to your air box. And then right here, your air box goes over two like little nipples there to hold in place. Just pull it out, it should just lift right up here. You can pull it right up out of the area here like so next what you're going to want to do is once you got the air box off you want to loosen this bolt here and there's one on each side disconnect your mass airflow sensor and you got another bolt on this side you're just going to loosen that up after you loosen that bolt if you look back behind there, you're going to see a hose band there. Just loosen that up. And you got one more hose that runs to the back here of this box. That's going to have to be taken off. And then this whole top assembly is just going to pop right on off. And I'll show you what it looks like once that's off. The idle air control is right here. It's a fill up screw, so we're going to pull that out, see what it looks like. As you guys can see in there, it looks pretty dirty. I didn't record the process of cleaning the idle air control valve. I got another video where I did that on another car. Um, I'll post that at the end of this video. We're going to go ahead and start this up, see if we have any issues, and hopefully that fixes it. If it does, then I won't need to go any further. All right, so if you guys end up doing the idle air control valve and that doesn't work, I want to let you guys know where the camshaft sensor is. It's right there underneath the passenger side valve cover pretty much, the bottom of the head. Real easy to get to once you take off the air box. Just one bolt. And then it'll fall right on out. Guys, look at the wire loom there. It's actually pretty oiled up there. So hopefully this is what's causing my problem. I'm going to go up to the local auto parts store and get a new one of these camshaft sensors. We'll install it and we'll see if that fixes it. Here's my old camshaft position sensor there on the left. New one's on the right. Just one bolt to get it out, and it's a 10 millimeter. It's pretty simple. 
we're gonna go ahead and throw the new one in there and see if this works all right so what i want to do now is i went up to autozone and picked up this fuel pressure test kit it's just model number 27167 and you're gonna spend about 160 bucks on this but you get that back once you return it this is what the kit looks like and it's got the instructions and everything here pretty much we're just going to use this gauge right now just to see where my fuel pressure is at and see if the lack of fuel is what's making my truck cut off so where you want to hook it up to is right here take this cap off the fuel rail just unscrew it and uh that's where you're going to want to hook up this fuel pressure tens tester i already actually hooked it up just to make sure everything worked properly that's why you see a little bit of moisture gasoline around the threads there but on the other end of this fuel pressure tester that's what that's going to look like and you're just going to finger tighten it right on there all right so that's what the gauge looks like I'm gonna go ahead, turn the key forward, not to start it up, but just to turn it forward so we can see where the pressure's at. Went in and turn it forward, and it's right at about 45. All right, guys, so it's been about five minutes, and the gauge hasn't really moved at all. It's held its pressure, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck up, and we'll let it idle here should jump up to about 50 psi because that's what the dodges run at so there it is it jumped up to about 50 psi and we're going to let it idle until it cuts out we'll see if the fuel pressure drops because if it holds its pressure, it's not going to be a fuel filter or a fuel pump issue. All right, guys. So my truck just cut off and the fuel pressure dropped a little bit, but not anything significant. So it's not a fuel issue. All right, guys. So that's some of the things I tried when I was diagnosing my truck. The problem with this issue, there's no engine light on. Uh, when the truck is actually stalling and stuff so you don't get any idea of what the problem could be So you kind of got to do it by process elimination. Those are a few things that I tried A um, couple other things I tried is I look for loose wiring definitely check all your fluids I heard that low transmission fluid can do that another thing I tried was the ASD relay which is the auto shutdown relay I read that sometimes if these start to go out, that can cause the same symptoms. So I just ended up swapping that out and then I tested it. And uh, of course the truck was still stalling, so that wasn't the issue. Um, what actually ended up fixing my truck is company got a hold of me and just by chance wanted me to do an install on their coil packs. So I said, yeah, I got the coil packs in. I swapped out my coil packs on the truck. That ended up fixing my problem. So um, I did a separate video where I did an install on the coil packs. I'll uh, link that in the description box if you guys want to know how to install coil packs on your Dodge Ram. It's super easy, not hard at all. And uh, here's me driving the truck now after I installed the coil packs. And as you guys can see, I have no issues and everything seems to be working fine. All right guys, we're on the freeway. No issues. All right, so hopefully this video was useful to you. I know it was a pain in my butt to try to figure out what the problem was. And the more research I did, it seemed like more and more people were having this issue, but they didn't know how to diagnose it. And with it being so many different things, uh, a lot of people just uh, 
we're getting frustrated with it so hopefully this video helped anybody out if you guys are having the same issue if it did please hit that like button got any comments or anything put them below if you guys like what i'm doing on my channel hit that subscription button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you guys get notified when i post my next video thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys later Bye. 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 Bye.